Welcome back everyone. Now it's to STEMS class 102. 101 I flunked, didn't I? But I, you know, once you get the hang of it and you get it feeding on into your machine right and all that, the way I just showed you works really beautifully. And the fact of the matter is I often do that when I have beautiful borders with vines that go like that because then if there are any imperfections, it doesn't show too much. The way I learned to do stems was with bias bars. And in the olden days, there were these metal ones, and I really love these metal ones. I'm not sure if they're still available or not. The problem with the metal ones is that you literally could really burn your hand because they get so hot. Then they came out with these plastic ones, which are a little more um, friendly when it comes to safety matters, but I don't care for how thick they are. But if you can't get your hands on these, okay, well, these will work. Okay, so what you do is you look at the pattern and you determine how big you want your stem to be. And how big you want to be your stem to be is going to be by the width of this. So let's see if I've got a stick that goes with Sue's pattern. I'm kind of surprised she didn't go with quarter inch because that's usually my get to, but then again, that's why she wins the ribbons. Here is my quarter inch, and yes, that's too big. That's not, that's much bigger than that. And then I found this one and I'm going, yeah, that's the stem maker I want. So what you do in the case of this is you take this measurement and you take it on both sides and then you add a, a half an inch to it because you, you're considering a quarter inch on each side. And again, you cut that strip. So it's like the other one that was cut at seven eighths for Sue's stems. And then what you do is again, you press it like before but then you go and stitch it before you do anything else. So let me go stitch it and I'll be right back. All right, I just went and I stitched it and you really do wanna be very careful with your uh, quarter inch and make sure you get it exactly. Then what you'll do is you'll take this metal and you'll insert it and you'll go all the way down. See, I got off a little bit, there we go. It's going to be a tight squeeze, but that's okay because then that means that um, you're getting a consistent stem. You're going to fill up the whole thing and then you're going to turn it like this. You're going to take this raw edge back like this and you're going to iron it. And for sure, I would probably want to use my really heavy duty iron for this and maybe even use steam. And in the case of this particular quilt, because the stem is so small, you're gonna have this grunky hangover stuff. And so then what you're going to do is just trim it off. You work your way down the whole stem and then you press it and then you pull it out. And there is a beautiful, beautiful stem ready to go. Again, it's not on the bias because it's a straight stem. If you're doing a whole lot of stem and you're preparing it and you want to do one giant long one that again you maybe roll on a toilet paper roll or something like that, when you piece the strips together, press the seams in one direction and make sure when you're feeding this thing in that you're going in the direction of the way this, the um, seams are pressed. Otherwise, you're gonna butt up against it and it's no fun, it'll stop right there. So I wanna show you next another way to prepare stems that you don't need any tools or anything like that. I think you'll like it and it's pretty easy to do.